Well, I'm getting roasted by the summer heat, the VR space is also heating up with some exciting news. From Meta reportedly scrapping the Quest 4 release previously expected next year, to Apple Vision Pro evolving into a gaming headset thanks to the newly added PSVR 2 control compatibility. There are also updates to OpenXR aiming to standardize how virtual objects are tracked in the real world. And if you stick around until the end, I love to talk a bit about the latest advancements in BCI technology and what they might mean for the future as presented in Neuralink Summer Update. Let's start with what's going on with the Quest 4. It seems Meta has decided to cancel its planned 2026 release and instead focus on launching a new ultralight headset with a tethered computer pack. According to multiple sources, the next candidate for a traditional form factor quest likely won't ship until 2027. A version of the device, codename Puffin, was originally slated for a 2027 release, but Meta has reportedly decided to prioritize it, now targeting a launch by the end of 2026. However, since they still exploring multiple display system approaches and price points, the final product might end up being quite different from the earlier versions. According to the Wall Street Journal, Meta is planning to price the device at under $1000, but it's still unclear which version this price refers to. Additionally, VR enthusiast Luna discovered references to automatic IPD adjustment and face unlock within the Horizon OS code, potentially hinting at futures planned for the upcoming headset. And according to sadly it's Bradley, one of the candidate prototypes for this device uses 0.9 inches micro OLED displays. The headset will likely be marketed with a focus on virtual screens positioning it as a portable multi-monitor setup for both entertainment and productivity. Whatever this turns out to be a smart move from Meta, or a letdown for existing Quest fans, remains to be seen. The biggest drawback of the Apple Vision Pro aside from its extremely high price was the lack of motion controllers, which significantly limited the range of interactions and experiences available on the headset. But not anymore. Soon, Apple Vision Pro owners will be able to play games using officially supported tracked controllers from Sony. The future is coming with Vision OS 26 and of course will require a separate purchase of the controllers. While some might see this as too little too late, I believe it's a game changer not just in how developers perceive the headset, but also in how Apple might approach the design of future models. Drop your thoughts in the comments. I love to hear your opinion on this. Another feature introduced in the Vision OS update is the significantly more realistic personas, which finally seem to have crossed the uncanny valley, or at least they appear to have in this preview. Apple says the new personas leverage industry-leading volumetric rendering and machine learning technology and have striking expressivity and sharpness, offering a full site profile view and remarkably accurate hair, lashes, and complexion. I can't wait to see avatars of this quality coming to other platforms as well once face and eye tracking becomes a default feature in more VR headsets. Next, I want to talk a bit about the Xbox Limited Edition Quest 3S headset. While it does look great with its black and green color palette, most people didn't expect it to make a significant impact in the VR space. But the reality gave us a surprise. In just 3 days, the headset sold out on Meta's official website despite its $400 price tag, which is $100 more than the base Quest 3S. Its true that the bundle includes an Xbox controller, the official Elite strap, and 3 months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. But I still believe the biggest driver behind the rapid sellout was the headset's unique color scheme. Of course, the rapid sellout could also be explained by the possibility that only a small number of units were made available on the official website. You can still try to find it on third-party sites like eBay. But personally, I wouldn't recommend it if you already own a Quest headset. What I hope Meta takes away from this is that a large portion of VR users would love to see future Quest headsets offered in a black variant as well. The new OpenXR Special Entities extensions standardize surface detection, marker tracking, facial anchors, and persistence, 
For those unfamiliar, OpenXR is an open standard API for AR, VR, and MR app development and runtime, managed by the Kronos Group. They strive to let developers build apps that run on any headset without needing to rely on vendor-specific core APIs for each piece of hardware. Today, nearly every major headset engine and runtime supports OpenXR, except for the Apple Vision Pro and PSVR 2. The new spatial entities extensions aim to standardize how developers leverage the environment tracking capabilities of headsets and glasses to build experiences that interact with the user's physical environment, a class of capabilities that until now have been handled by vendor-specific extensions or SDKs. Hopefully, this will enhance the quality of our mixed reality experiences and finally make it possible to seemingly blend the real world with virtual assets. Now for the gaming news. If you are into quick, intense standalone experiences, you'll be glad to hear that Thrill of the Fight 2 just received a major update, adding a new venue, casual matchmaking, and a few other minor improvements. You can now spar with other players in a brand new hotel environment without affecting your player ranking, which is perfect for training your boxing skills. The referee can also penalize you for turning away or lowering your head too often, and the developer has implemented a range of balance tweaks to the damage system. You can check out the full patch notes here. Finally, let's talk about Elon Musk's BCI project, Neuralink. In their summer 2025 update video, they shared the progress made so far with the help of their seven human trial participants, as well as their vision for what comes next. Why I believe this is relevant for us VR fans is because Neuralink's ultimate goal is to develop a full brain interface capable of reading from and writing to every single neuron, something that could completely redefine how we experience virtual reality in the future. The dream of full dive VR will be one step away once this kind of technology becomes a reality. What really caught my attention was a clip showing two Neuralink users competing in a first-person shooter. According to the presenter, one of them was able to control their in-game character by simply imagining natural body movements, similar to how you will move in virtual reality. Combined with the upcoming Blindsight project, which aims to help blind people see again, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that by 2030, you might get absolutely wrecked in your favorite FPS by someone who at first glance looks like they are peacefully sleeping in bed. While we are still quite far from consumer level full dive VR, I believe this is a step towards unveiling the technology needed to make it possible. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on Neuralink's future projects. If you're interested, I highly recommend watching the full presentation. You can find the link in the description. This is all for now. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more VR content. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.